Hi there. Well, I would say good morning, but I think it's actually good afternoon. <laughs> okay, then, where have I been? Well, I sort of felt ill on Thursday, Friday, and if you were even with me on my live on Saturday, I wasn't clever then. You know that feeling when you think you're going to come down with something and you feel very fluey and very off, but you never actually get it. <laughs> Whatever you think is lurking and looming, it never actually arrives. But I just didn't feel, you know, myself at all. You know, I must stop saying, you know, because you don't know, do you, unless I tell you. No. <laughs> Here we go, anyway. So, well, what have I got on today? I've got a thick jumper on today, even though the sun is shining. And I don't know what the wool is, and I can't remember <laughs> what the pattern was. I think I found it on, on Ravelry or something. It's a super chunky, anyway. And I'm wearing my patchwork pants, because it's not too cold in the house today. Oh, you can't see my patchwork pants, can you? Oh, let me see if I can get my leg to move. Yeah, patchwork pants. Oh, oh, that's my exercise for the day done. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to start featuring. I've been in the shed today, only for a moment, because it's not sun shining, it looks glorious, but it's deceiving. It's still very cold. I've decided I've brought in a few things from the shed, and I'm going to feature something each, well, each time I make a video, I was going to say each day, but that might be a lie. Each time I make a video, I'm going to feature something. Yeah. This one was the off the shoulder design by Jen Cherry from Star Lily Creations. You can buy the pattern if you go on Ravelry or if you go on um, Etsy, but it's quite an expensive pattern to be truthful. It's, it's a bit difficult for me to show it actually because as the mannequin doesn't have any arms, whoops, <laughs> there we go again. It doesn't stay on her shoulders very well. It's meant to be like a bardo. Excuse my back while I pin it back up again. It's supposed to be... Oh, I can't do it now. The pins fell then on the floor. But it's supposed to be a bardo. No, can't. You'll have to imagine it's off the shoulders, yeah. It's a bardo style, so, you know, unfortunately, the mannequin doesn't have a pair of shoulders, yeah. So this is for sale. Everything has been reduced. Everything I'm going to show you this next week or so. I'm going to go through the garments in my shed one by one. And each time I come on a video, I'm going to feature one. Yeah. My email address is always underneath, you know, in the, whatever they call it, the, the show notes or something they call it, don't they? My email address is always in there. So if you're interested in knowing what size it is, how much it is, uh, then I will let you know. Yeah. Sadly, if you are in the US, it will cost £30 for the postage. I did post a poncho to the US, the Frida Kahlo one, and it arrived. Yes, it's arrived, but it did cost me, well, not quite £30, but I, did, I only had a few coppers changed from £30 for the postage, so I wasn't overcharging anybody when I say it's £30 postage to go to the US. It's a sad thing, but it's true. I can't do anything about the postage. If you are in the UK, of course, it would probably cost about £4 to post it. That's about it. Anyway, that's what I've reached out of the shed. I'll be reaching something. I've brought about six things in with me um, to show you. And stay with me, there's more. <laughs> Who used to say that? A comedian used to say, there's more, there's more, you know, there's more. Anyway, yesterday I got a new laundry basket. It's on wheels, it's only very narrow, but it just fits into a, a little corner space I've got left in here. It might seem big in here, and it is big compared with what the room I had before in my other bedroom, in my sleeping bedroom. This is my sitting bedroom, that's my sleeping bedroom, yeah. But it just fits into a corner space and I've managed to put all my shawls in it, yeah. Instead of them being all over the place and all over the floor, because there was nowhere to put them, the, 
bottom of the wardrobe was getting exceedingly crowded. Crowded, I should say, not crowded. So I decided to put all my shawls in one place. So I've got a couple more actually still in the bottom of the wardrobe that I need to sort out. And the white shawl I had the other day with the granny squares, it actually needs a repair. I think I said it's been everywhere in the world with me whenever I've been abroad, which was quite some time ago actually. And I'd crocheted it together and in a couple of places the crocheting has, has broken away. So I need to just catch it, you know, so it won't go any bigger, the holes won't go any larger. So that's what I've got to do today. I haven't done much in the way of knitting or crochet at all because every time I start the hand just cramps up, yeah. Um, I did watch uh, a, diff a new programme to me, it's Derek Knit and Crochet, he's in America. He's a friend, well he's an online friend of Sheila, you know, Sheila's knitting and nattering and whatever. You know what she's called anyway. I always forget, when people have a long, long title in their headings, I always forget half of it. I know it's Sheila's knitting and something or other, yeah. <laughs> something small or when you call your name I remember you yeah you know <laughs> when you've got a great long title for your videos I forget I forget anyway I was watching him and he started to crochet the same way that Sheila does you know and that is the way I may have to start doing it when the hands all wrapped up yeah yeah I got my um what do you call it the plastic thing that you put over with the I got that, that arrived the other day, just in case they call me in early for my operation. I thought, be prepared. You know, be prepared, Janet, be prepared, yeah. So I ordered that, that came, so I'm ready, and I've forgotten where I put it, so that's a good help, isn't it? When you don't know what you've actually done with it, you know, that's great, isn't it, Janet? That's very good, yeah. I think I put it in one of the drawers, but I cannot remember where I put it. That's very good isn't it Janet, very good. I've got drawers by the side of you in case you're wondering what I'm doing. I know I put it in one of them, or I thought I did. This is going to be great isn't it when I've only got one hand and I'm like, uh, now where did I put that? Where did I put it? Oh I know where I put it, it's in the, it's in my sleeping bedroom. Got two, they're joined together, two bits to my bedroom. This is my sitting bedroom and that's my sleeping bedroom. <laughs> and my sitting bedroom is getting more crowded by the moment. There's not an awful lot of room in it. Hmm. I've got my sewing machine in here which I still have not done anything with. These are my trousers which I absolutely adore but what I don't like is the elastic at the bottom. I'm not a fan of like the harem look. So I wanted to take the elastic out which that's not a problem, just snip snip and it's out. But the problem is, will it then be too long? You know, because I've got short legs going shorter. All my dresses are too long. Everything's too long. I'm shunting. It's the old spinal trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I love these. I think I, I've worn them, but I haven't actually shown them you before, I don't think. They have got elephants on them. And if you like them, they came from Moonbeams and Mayhem. And they're lovely and fleecy and warm. And they've got pockets on with wooden beads dangling off them. So I've got that. And then my original pair that I've been wearing and wearing and wearing has gained a hole. They've been washed so much, these, that um, where they're sewn together has kind of like spread even though they've been overlocked. So they're sort of coming apart at the seams. Luckily they are large enough for me to re-sew. Um, it's not that I've busted them apart because I'm too fat for them or whatever. Um, they're frayed more than anything else. So there's, luckily there's loads of room in them. So I can run down the seam and repair the bit that's, ah, oh, that's the bit that's really broken. <laughs> It's just frayed, as you can see, just frayed away. That's the only problem with this sort of, I call it like a woven fabric. But I love these trousers. 
But these again, I don't know why Moonbeams of Mayhem have to have. So once again, I would love to take the elastic out because I don't like the way they. But once again, they were probably dropped too long when I did that. So it's not just a question of sewing up the seam, taking the elastic out. It's a question of will they be too long? Yeah. I mean, some, oh, there's another one that's, didn't notice that one. See, that's frayed. See what I mean about them all fraying? Mind you, I've had them a couple of years, so I think actually I bought them when I lived in Presswich, if I remember rightly. But I've certainly worn them while I've been here because it's been so flipping cold. Yeah, another one. I must have, I'll have to go through every seam, really, and do a zigzag, I think. Oh, I should inform you that Rosie's on high alert. Yeah. So sorry about the barking. She will be three this week. On the 8th, she will be three. It doesn't seem that long she was got her. Unfortunately, it's a lovely day, you see, and every all my neighbours are kind of taking doggies for walks and things. So she, you know, really doesn't like that sort of thing, you know. People are not allowed to put their own dog up their own street. And uh, if she really goes bananas, it'll be because the post lady has arrived. Not that I'm expecting anything. But that, you know, we may get a letter or something, yeah. One never knows. Anyway, I hope you're all alright. I hope you haven't got any lurgies or anything like that. The lurgy that never was. I could call that title of this uh, video, couldn't I? The lurgy that never was. The flu that never came. <laughs> I just felt rotten. On the Friday, was it Friday? Yeah, Thursday I went out to the cafe. I don't know whether I made a video or I didn't. I can't remember. Mm, brain fade. Anyway, an absolute shit, well, a busload of kids came in. Well, they were teenagers, really, but they were quite good, reasonably. Well, they were a bit noisy, but then, you know, a busload full of teenagers is quite noisy, isn't it? But when I came home from there, I felt quite shivery. And I hadn't eaten all my breakfast, which is strange, because I felt hungry. Because I hadn't eaten anything. But I couldn't eat all my breakfast. Anyway, on the Friday, oh, goodness. You know when you're visibly shivering, and you can't stop shivering. And I had layer after layer after whatever. I finished up with a cuddly on, which is why I couldn't make a video, because, you know, I would have been in the cuddly. In fact, I still had the cuddly on on Saturday. I had to take it off um, when I was making my video because I thought it doesn't look nice with a big hood up with the fur. <laughs> I looked like I was in the Arctic. But I could not stop shivering and shaking. And the only way I ever got warm was when I finally got into bed. And I had my hot, well, it's not a hot water bottle. It's one of those wheat pads, you know, that you put in the microwave and heat up. I had that and then I've also got a teddy bear that's got a wheat filling that you put in the microwave and I hug my little teddy, yeah. Um, and then I did finally get one. Mm -hmm. But last night I had a really strange feeling. I was at a party with one of Bob Marley's sons at this party. It wasn't Ziggy. He was, oh, and he's got several sons, haven't he? Yeah. But this, he was definitely there with his dreadlocks, whoever he was. And because it was a party that I hadn't planned, and there was loads of people there, I hadn't got any food in. And I said to him, at the, I said, well, you know, I haven't got any food in. And he said, that's okay. Just, you know, get some eggs and I'll, I'll cook. Some eggs for everybody. And I was getting my purse and going to the supermarket. I must have been still driving in my dream, yeah. Anyway, I was talking to Nathan today and he said, oh, Levi Roots has gone into is it Big Brother or I'm a Celebrity or something like that. And Levi Roots is um, a Caribbean cook in the UK and he's got dreadlocks. <laughs> and he said, it's funny that because I hadn't watched the programme. I don't watch it. And he said, he was making omelettes for everybody that was in the programme. And I'm thinking, where do I get this from? Because I definitely had not even seen a a snippet of this whatever it was big brother or i'm a celebrity i don't know what it is it's something anyway levi roots 
was in there making omelettes. So maybe instead of being Bob Marley's son in my dream, maybe it was Levi Rentia. <laughs> it was somebody with dreadlocks anyway. I used to buy Levi Roots the instant meals. He had a deal, I think, with Tesco once upon a time. I don't think they're in there now. They're very spicy. Yeah, Caribbean style meals, very spicy. But I do like, I think I've mentioned before, I can eat a Caribbean spiced meal, like a jerk chicken or something like that. And I can eat a Thai um, curry and stuff. But an Indian curry. Ugh. They, the family cooked a curry here the other day. Oh, the house. Oh. Oh. You know when you don't like a smell? I was lighting candles everywhere. <laughs> trying to open the door, even though it was freezing. Opening the door, trying to get rid of the smell of this curry. I don't know what there is about an Indian curry. Everybody else in the world seems to like a curry, but I do not. No. And yet I'll eat jerk chicken. Oh, I used to. Ah, I really miss lots of places in Presswich and around the surrounding areas because we did have West Indian uh, takeaways not too far from me when I had a car. And I could get jerk chicken and I could get rice and peas, which is kind of a misnomer because they're not green peas. They're like little brown to me, they're like beans, they call it a juki beans or something. Little beans they are. And they cook it with like a coconut milk style. I loved that. I mean, at one time when I worked at the job centre, one of the girls on the switchboard, she was um, West Indian. And her mum, if she made any, and she had any leftovers from Sunday lunch, she used to bring me a little container with rice and peas and a little bit of jerk chicken in on the Monday. And everybody in the canteen, well it wasn't a canteen like you buy food, it was a canteen where you sat and brought your own food. Everybody used to say, oh what have you got Jan, it smells gorgeous. And I used to say, mm. April brought it in for me. And they're all like, April, does your mum have any more leftovers? <laughs> but sadly they seemed to eat most of it on the Sunday so I very rarely got leftovers on the Monday. But I did used to like it. And also there used to be an artisan's market in the precinct in um, Presswich. Uh, I think it was about once a month. And there was a lady there who used to come. She was a West Indian lady and she used to bring the, uh, the patties. They're very spicy, like a pasty. They're very, very spicy. And I used to love those. Which used to sort of amaze me some because he used to say, how can you eat that and then you won't eat curry? But it's one particular spice that I don't like the smell of or the taste of that is not in West Indian cooking and it's not in Thai. Yeah. So maybe the answer is I should go to Thai one for my holiday or the West Indies. <laughs> Neither of which will happen as I don't even have a passport. I was supposed to be going, as you know, for a week to somewhere in Spain um, where my son's friends have got a, a, an apartment. And we got offered this apartment for a week, I think it was either supposed to be March or April. But as you know, I'm having my hand done at the end of March. No doubt I would have been fit enough to go to recuperate, you know, after the op, but I haven't even bothered to get a passport. I said before, I procrastinate so much, I really do. I think I must do that, or I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it next week. And I am a great sort of um, poster girl for, <laughs> I'll do it next week. <laughs> Which, of course, next week, tomorrow, never comes. Yeah. Oh, I've got a dry mouth now, I didn't bring anything in to drink. Never mind. I'm going to go now and I'm going to attempt if I can get on my recliner because Trixie takes it over. But at the moment actually she sat in the other the other half of the conservatory because there's a big pouffet, whatever you want to call it, a footstool in there. It's a great big square one and it's in the sunshine. So she's flaked out on that fast asleep. But as I say, Rosie is three on the eighth of this month. 
Who would have known we'd had her that long? Well, we haven't had her that long. She was born on the 8th. We didn't get her until she was like five months old, I think. Because if you remember me telling you, the whole litter of puppies, there was nine puppies, caught parvo while they were over in Romania. And Rosie and her sister were the only two that survived, sadly. They had been injected, but uh, there must have been a dodgy batch of vaccine because there was another litter of puppies and I think only one of those puppies survived in the other litter. So sadly, you know. Anyway, luckily our Rosie. She's a little fighter, she's a little trooper. She pulled through and she arrived. Feisty as they come. <laughs> I should have known she'd survive because she's a feisty little woman. As you can probably hear every time I make a video, is the woo 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 I turn the phone off so you don't hear all the notifications. And then I get Rosie, or the doorbell, or whatever. I can't wait, can I? Mm -hmm. I'm still watching the street views in Milan because there's absolutely hundreds of them. And they're all from this year, they're not old ones, you know. I love people watching. When I go away on holiday and I'm sitting in the sunshine, I like to sit in a cafe and people watch as they go by. Here in Fleetwood, people watching would just be a succession of people huddled up in an anorak with a dog, sitting on concrete looking at the sea. And it's not even a picturesque, lovely blue-green sea. It's a sludge brown sea. So people watching is not. In the summertime, maybe in the cafe, because the cafe is next to like a splash pool where the little kiddies come out. So I do people watch a bit, you know, there. They do actually branch out, well the children do, they turn into colour. The adults know, but the children, you know, little colourful swimsuits on, you do get a bit of colour in the Fleetwood then. But I was, you know, in Milan, they're so colourful and they've all got the big hats on. But I tell you, the Lamborghinis that are there and the Testarossas and what have you got. Oh, the cars. And everybody rides, seems to ride either a bush cycle, electric one, bush cycle, or motorbike or a scooter, Vespa. Even the women. And the little dogs are sitting in baskets on the front, you know, and there's baskets on the back where they put the goodies in that they bought, you yeah. I haven't seen one mobility scooter. I've been watching about 10 or 12 of these videos. Not one mobility scooter. They must be all fit as fleas. Or they leave all the oldies at home. <laughs> I did see a couple of wheelchairs being pushed. But it was a bit tricky because one wheelchair nearly tipped over because the pavements were a bit, mm, mm, yeah, you know. Uh, but I wouldn't like to drive or even walk, really. But there's a lovely big square in the middle of Milan where they've got this huge wall, like a fountain, with water coming down it. And apparently the apple store is underneath this. It's like a wall of water. It's huge. And nearly every video I've watched seems to go back to this. It's a massive big square, yeah. And everybody congregates. And uh, then there's another square where there's a beautiful huge cathedral, beautiful, beautiful place in Milan, yeah? And everybody's there taking photographs. And of course the influencers or the TikTokers are all there doing all this business and, you know, wearing their best outfits and stuff, having their photos taken, like, you know, in front of this cathedral. And um, it's amazing how many people are being photographed or videoed. You know, you can see them walking down the street and you think they're not just pass her by because they're dressed up to the nines you know and they're giving it all the fancy walk you know and then you look and there's a photographer and then they go back again and then they come back again you know <laughs> it must be the place if you're an influencer whatever they call them these days uh, to have your photo took mm -hmm. I don't think it would be quite the same if I did all this business on Fleetwood <laughs> Seafront not that I could get anybody to video me, and I haven't got the, the thingy with your on a stick, you know. <laughs> or if I did, I'd have to switch the video on because I haven't got one. Oh, I'm not technically minded. 
I know you get a remote, don't you, or something, and you have a, a selfie stick or something. Well, there goes Rosie on high alert again, having another little bark, so no doubt I'd better let you go before you get fed up of her barking. I get fed up of her barking, but bless her, she, you can't stop her. So don't forget, if you're interested in this or whatever I'm going to be showing in the next few days, let me know. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to go. Bye for now. Like and subscribe, please. Thumbs up. Bye for now.